King of Charmanders here today we're your judge your jury and your analyst and today I bring to you my best ABV team for the retro cup so this one's pretty unique I didn't think it would work that well but because not a lot of people are actually using what you call it well actually a lot of people are using like tongue leads etc nowadays but this is an ABB team featuring Swampert in the lead. I've seen a lot of Rise and Alola Marowax in the lead for some odd reason. And I like Swampert a lot for its ability. If you're able to get an Earthquake through Shields, you can take back some matchups like Wall Rain. And you can take matchups like Lickitung. So, that's why I like Swampert a lot and Hydro Cannon's overpowered. No, seriously, they nerfed it before. For those of you that haven't played Go, ba Go PvP since like the beginning... Hydro Cannon was actually nerfed, and it's still so powerful even though it's nerfed. That's how, that, yeah, Swampert's broke. But this features Water Double Flyer. So we use Swampert's Pressure here to set up our Flyers, or we will sack Swampert in the lead to set up Noctowl and Talonflame in the back. Noctowl has a lot of great combinations. It's able to wall pretty much almost every single Ghost type. It beats Lickitung as well as... Like I mentioned with Alola Marowak and Coffer Grigus, gives both of those mods an incredibly hard time. It's also bulky enough to uh, enable you to break shields or function as a switch to... You'll see me how I use it in a safe switch in this instance, or if you want, you can send in Talonflame. There are not a lot of things in this meta that hard counter Talonflame to Oblivion, and Talonflame could break a shield or two, or set you up for a sweep in the back with Swamper, etc. So yes, this is Water Double Flyer. I, don't, I didn't think it would work this well, but I haven't had a negative sense since I've used this team for my, well, yeah, through its testing. So it's pretty, it's pretty good, if you, especially if you have good energy management and good awareness of your matchups. Before we get started, though, this is my therapist mental health tip of the day, and it's going to be about anger. Now, before you throw your $500 or $700 phone across the room or possibly damage something else. You know, back in the day, we had something called, back in the day when the Wii first started, or the Wii, Nintendo Switch, you know, when the Nintendo Wii first came out, you know those straps you never used? And there were reports of players flinging their controller at their TV and breaking it because of how pissed off they were. Well, in terms of anger, there is something called the cycle of anger. So when it comes to anger, I'm gonna give you a worksheet here that's with this popular CBT model, which is cognitive behavioral therapy, not the other thing you're thinking about. Even though weed is pretty dang good. I may or have not been baked at one point in my life or multiple times in my life, but that's another story. So the cycle anger, this worksheet will give you a good little diagram where anger begins with a trigger. So these to negative thoughts, emotions, physical symptoms, and a behavioral response. So someone punches you, you think about your life choices, and then you want to punch back, which is me a lot in combat sports. Like I faint, I faint. I wait for a reaction, I slip, and then I counter. Or I just jab your face to death, either one. So this tool is really useful as a thought log or as a group conversation speed, as a relatable way to explain the CBT model to clients who struggle with anger. So anger comes in a lot of different forms. You've got anger management, you have intermittent explosive disorder where you get pissed off every 15 seconds at pretty much everything and you have a hard time controlling it. Otherwise known as IED. So with the cycle of anger, this is a good little worksheet to give you a little glimpse of how anger works and triggering events, negative thoughts, emotional responses, and physical and behavioral symptoms. So I definitely recommend you take a look at this for Go Battle League, especially gonna it would help you a lot as far as reactions, etc. Because it'll give you a second to think and think about your thoughts and emotions, your feelings right now, and overcome them over time as you get used to battling, which if you see me watch if you see me do live on Twitch is how I pretty much master this. Being a therapist actually really helps when it comes to video gaming, etc. But it also helps a lot with Go Valley because it can be an extremely frustrating system that's been broken forever and will never rise to the, the echelons of a tier 1 esports because it's just so godforsakingly broken and it's just really not that interesting. But besides all of that, 
here is my best ABB team for the Retro Cup as of right now. And without further ado, let's get started. All right, here are the battles. It's pretty simple. You lose the lead, you say switch in a knockdown, and then you try to realign. Unless you win the lead. Now, what makes Swamper pretty good in this meta is that you're gonna see some Needle Queens. I've seen some Lola Marowax. Outside of seeing a Wall Rain, like you see here, you can do very, very well because of Swampert's ability to just Hydro Cannon down and Hydro Cannon's overpowered. As you see, I'm gonna fire off an Earthquake. That's what you wanna do if you see a Wall Rain anyway. Try to get an Earthquake through Shields like you see here, and then try to either Hydro Cannon down or you could switch out in a Talon Flame. Either way, you want Talon Flame onto this Wall Rain. So as you see here, to, we're just going, we got an extra Incinerate through and we're gonna be able to Incinerate down. Thanks to that, we have at least, well, I'll be able to fire at least one move, maybe two. So I'm gonna fire off this flame charge. I'm going to be able to get one more just because even though this is a Shadow Needle Queen, it's gonna take, I should be able to live thanks to my IVs being decently good with my Talon Flame. We're gonna fire off another Incinerate here. This should break a shield because it's plus one. Then we can just send in Swamper. We have shield advantage. I'm gonna shield here though, because even though some Needle Queens are taking Stone Edge, some might be still carrying earth power like you see here i should be able to safely farm down and this is where we want knocked out the reason why i like knocked out a lot is because you can convincingly beat like a in all scenarios you also beat all of the ghost types and knocked out also gives a little also beats a little marowak pretty convincingly even unless that's fire blast so if it fire blasts you to death that's when it sucks but other than that it's very very powerful so knocked out has some great anti-meta coverage here even though we're using Noctaw as our primary safe switch, this pretty much uses the two shield strat with two chargers with Talonflame and with Swampert. There's not a lot of, just like in the in Open Great League, not a lot of things will resist both Flame Charge and Brave Bird in the Retro Cup meta. So as you see here, this is pretty much game. All I have to do is go for a Sky Attack because my opponent is locked into my Noctaw. I will resist everything but the Psychics. But even then, Knocked Out is extremely bulky, and it won't take enough damage to matter. As you see here, I'm just going to switch into Swamper to snipe down my opponent's Needle Queen, just in case it wouldn't matter either way, but just to finish out the match. And that's game. But yes, yeah, so you lose the lead, you say switch into a knock into our Knocked Out, unless they send in something that's really weak to Talon Flame, like a Meganium. We got Legend on Legend action, and as you see, we got Deoxys Defense into our Knocked Out. First of all, I didn't even they swap out. That's not a bad matchup if you have Psycho Boost. Well, I'm assuming they don't have Cypho Boost. My opponent sends in the Primate. We're just going to eat this Night Slash, as you see here. Even if they have Ice Punch, you don't want to... Even if they have Ice Punch, you want to save your shield anyways, because they won't be able to counter down unless they get the boost. So my opponent gets a boost. Of course, they're going to shield him. I'm like, are you serious, dude? If they don't boost here, they can't take back Switch. Because of that extra Scott Wing attack, though, I should be able to get to a... Sky attack here, and then this will go off, and this should take the second shield, or our opponent's gonna let my primate go. They'll let primate go. And my opponent ends up boosting for the first time of freaking course. You know, that's freaking amazing. Now, the reason my opponent did this is because they're gonna get a little bit of extra farm before they send in their next mon. Instead, I elect to give up switch. Since my opponent sends in the Ox's defense, the back row doesn't like Swampert. So I'm gonna just stay in here and just straight Hydro Cannon this thing to death. And I'm going to find out whether or not this thing has Psycho Boost or not. Going to double Hydro Cannon here. You can build up to the Earthquake and then fire, but then your opponent has a chance to fire Psycho Boost and then dip out. As you see, two Hydro Cannons will be able to put my opponent in the red. I will shield here just in case. I have a bunch of energy on Swampert. I will have an energy lead against whatever's in the back row, and my opponent's going to fire their second Psycho Boost here. Because we blocked the first one, the second one won't KO. And then I should be able to get to another Hydro Cannon unless they have something like a Grass type, like a Meganium or something of that sort, and then they just farm me down. Hydro Cannon goes off, and our opponent happens to have a Cast Form. Now, here's the fun fact. At full HP, mind you, full HP, a Talon Flame won't die to one Rock Weather Ball. So as you see here, Cast Form is a very spicy and very dangerous mod inside the Retro Cup meta. And at this point, I'm like, wait, does one Brave Bird actually kill at full HP? Because... Cast Warp is decently bulky, and it does, thankfully. After that, all we have to do is fire one incinerate, and then that's game. So, again, this is why I really like having Knocked Owl on this team, and why this double flyer combination actually works. So as you see here, we lose the lead hard with Altaria, and this is where you'll see me say switch into Knocked Owl. 
The idea here is to make it so that Knocked Owl can either take over the lead it, or take out to whatever Swampert's weak to, then Swampert with shields or Talonflame can possibly take out your opponent. As you see here, Altaria is incredibly thick, and unfortunately, you don't really have a great chance in a two shield anyways. Your goal here is to chip away at Altaria as much as possible. We're going to fire off these two sky attacks here. I'm hoping to grab a shield or two, or just outright win switch. So as you see, we're just going to fire these sky attacks. Our opponent's going to break their are finally going to use up one shield, and then I'm going to go down to the zeros. Yes, I'm going to be down a shield, but I want to force my opponent's energy. I want to force all my opponent's energy. That's basically what I'm just trying to do here. Because my opponent won't be able to go to sky attack me down. They're going to either have to go in even shield scenarios or they're going to have to blow their energy. Or they just give up switch, as you see here. So we want alignment. And we have a Medicham. This is actually really bad. So the thing about Medicham is that Medicham has Psychic. So Psychic hits for big damage. And a revved up Medicham is absolutely overpowered. We're going to sit in Talonflame. What I'm trying to do here is either force force whatever is in the back to take a Brave Bird. Then maybe I could just farm down and then fire a Hydro Cannon or an Earthquake. I won't die to one Psychic against my Swampert here. And they're going to have to fire their, their blow their energy here unless they really want me to farm down completely. As you see here, they go off with Shadow Ball. I'm going to send in Swampert. I'm just going to farm down here. Now, with all of this extra energy, I should just be able to double Hydro Cannon here. Again, one Psychic won't kill in this range. And I should be able to get to two Hydro Cannons thanks to getting this energy lead, farming down that Copper Grigus versus my opponent. I could have just gone for the Earthquake, but just to be safe here, I don't think Earthquake kills at this range just because it's a Medicham XL. Hell, it might. It's just I'm not good at measuring that <laughs> because I haven't faced Medicham versus Swampert enough. Better to go for the double Hydro Cannon play. Besides, you win CMP anyway, so might as well just clutch it up. Double Hydro Cannon goes through. We make our opponent insanely wet. And that's game. Let's see. That's... Yeah, it was... Uh, it was like... That was actually a little sweaty. Because I don't like getting one punch, man. This is not JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And as bizarre as Medicham looks, I don't like getting punched in the face to death. Especially if it's something like Gone from Hunter x Hunter. And he's just really pissed off because you just killed his best friend. You know, I mean, if you if y'all know that reference, that well, technically Kite lives, so then he doesn't really die; he just gets reincarnated. That's what I like about the story. Anyways, we got Ligatung onto Swamper, and this is a terrible lead for you. You have to call the Power Whip, or you die. Or better yet, your opponent's really comfortable just body slamming you to death here. Your win condition in this scenario is you have to get an Earthquake through Shield. You'll see me stay in here just because, even if I lose Swamper, what I want to do is realign Swamper on a Knockdown. So you have to get an Earthquake through Shields with Lickitung, and then you can straight Hydro Cannon down. Yeah, you're going to go down Shields, but your opponent's going to have to give a switch here, and you're going to be able to rev up anyways with Hydro Cannons. In this instance, after firing this Hydro Cannon, I should have just sent in Talonflame. Talonflame should have been able to incinerate down. However, my opponent is able to get to another move. So that's, that's massive rippage, because I lose an entire Swampert with energy. But this is okay, because as long as we hard counter whatever's in the back, we should be able to win. So I like leaving Knocked Out while alive, because of Knocked Out's ability to have a strong combination against a good back row, and because that Lickitung is so hurt, I could just farm it down with Knocked Out. Shadow Ball goes through, we have energy. I'm going to switch out though. I switch out really quickly. I should be able to farm down this Lickitung completely, and now I have a Talon Flame with energy. So I, after the switch timer is up, I can just combo in with Talonflame. Street Sider 6 is coming in soon. And remember what I told you about getting hard countered. About hard countering your back row. Our opponent sends in Alolan Marowak, which is great. With all this extra energy, I'm just going to straight Shadow Ball. We should be able to take out this Alolan Marowak. And then our opponent is going to have to take out our Lick... Their opponent's Lick Tongue so hurt already that it's just going to get Wing Attack down. Or even if by some miracle that it does... It blows its energy or they force my... Talon Flame in, I have a move queued. So all I have to do is incinerate our Brave Bird down, and that would be game. So as you see here, all we're just going to do is just our opponent just top left because they already know it's over. And that's game. So we get Legend on Legend action for the final battle here. We got Swampert into Typhlosion, and this is mega spicy. I'm like, wow, I approve the choice, good sir. But you unfortunately meet a Swampert. They send in Hypno, which is actually a pretty gate sway switch for the Retro Cup. Hypno fell off a lot because of the wall rate Trevcore. It's just so godforsakenly overpowered, and Hypno is slow. That's basically what happened. So as you see here, all we're going to do is just stay in here. I'm just going to Hydro Cannon them, and then I'm going to swap out. 
I want to force an opponent's shield. You're going to outpace this Hypno anyway, so you might as well wait. As you see here, our opponent's going to fire. This is likely a Shadow Ball. They want to take out my Swamper here, and then I'm going to send a Knockout. I managed to send a Knockout, and all I'm going to do is Wing Attack down. Even though Thunder Punch is boosted by the Shadow Damage, all we're going to do is we're just going to farm down this Hypno. Yes, you are ugly. Yes, you are evil. Yes, you are dark, but you aren't as, you aren't as dark as the Chimera arc from Hunter x Hunter. Just saying, that was an incredibly dark arc, and damn, Hunter x Hunter is dark. We farm down Hypno, and we got two Sky Attacks queued here. I'm going to fire off the first one, and they managed to get incinerate through That really pisses me off that that game does this nowadays. So as you see, Sky Attack goes through. I'm going to fire the second one here right away, and because incinerate went through, it should allow me to fire the second one anyways without anything going through. Sky goes down, we should be able to break a shield here, and then my opponent has to contend with a whole Swamper. They have a move queued though, so I'm going to send in Swamper. Swamper's going to eat the move, and I still have Talonflame. So as you see here, they send him a game, my opponent should top left because this is pretty much game. All I have to do is fire, is fire charge out, and then that's GG's. And that's game! I hope y'all enjoyed the battles. As you see, Swampert is still broken, and will continue to be broken for a very long time unless they nerf Hydro Cannon again, which is probably never going to happen. But this is, a, again, this is a very unique team because, like I mentioned, double safe switch and you kind of need a little bit of knowledge of matchups and how to play out of rough scenarios like you see here. I've literally lost like, I don't know, three or four leads in this shoutcast, but if you're, but it can also work really well because Swampert can catch all the Marowak leads as well as Needle Queens and it does decently well against pretty much every single, or does well against every single fighter again in the Retro Cup meta. So, I hope y'all enjoyed the battles, and I hope y'all are enjoying the season. It's pretty, I'm not gonna lie, I don't care about Legends, so I'm not try. I don't think I've tried hard for the past couple of seasons, I'm not trying hard this time around, so yeah. But, you definitely want to, want to play, or where I should have played more was last, was during the Fossil Cup, because that's when actually Triple Dust was around. So if you're gonna do your battles, do them when Triple Dust is active. Yes. But if you're trying, I hope y'all are do enjoying this season. There's still a lot of problems, etc. A lot of fast move inconsistencies are still going on, and I don't know why. And to I, just overhaul the system. If y'all can't don't, if y'all can't fix what's broke, make something new. Yes, make something new, and then yeah, because holy crap, God, it's embarrassing. Well, Niantic's not embarrassed. They only care about money, so we already know how that is. Anyways, I hope y'all are, again, I hope y'all are enjoying your battles, etc. Hopefully y'all are having some fun, having some fun at least. And hopefully, I don't know if Go Valley's ever going to be fixed. How the hell we can hope, right? Do me a huge favor, please like, subscribe, and comment as I usually do for the YouTube algorithm. I appreciate every single one of y'all. I will, and I also stream on Twitch, not consistently right now, but you'll see me on there, yeah. But without further ado, good luck on your Go Valley sets, and I will see y'all on the next video.